Hey Coastline! So today I wanted to acknowledge and just appreciate the fact that you are a prophet. Yes, you, you're a prophet. It's true. And I know immediately a bunch of y'all want to push back on that. And you're thinking that is ridiculous. That is not who I am. Like, you don't know what you're talking about, Sarah, etc., etc. But here's the thing. When you say that stuff, you actually aren't arguing with me. You're arguing with the Bible and Jesus. And guess what? He kind of knows what he's talking about. So he wins. But it's true. We know that you can prophesy because actually scripture, both in uh, 1 Corinthians and the book of Joel and the book of Acts, says multiple times that all can prophesy that every believer can prophesy. And so if you are a believer in Jesus and you have Holy Spirit living and dwelling inside of you, well, guess what? That means you, you can prophesy. It's true. But I think we get a bit, uh, a bit funny about these words, you know, prophecy and prophet and, and all of that, because we assume that to be a prophet, to prophesy, it's always about either foretelling which is when um, someone you know, ha gets a message from God about something that's going to happen and then shares it and it happens, or forth telling, which is what Ezekiel does in the Valley of Dry Bones when he partners with the Lord and he speaks something out so that it happens. And while both of these things, foretelling and forth telling, are a part of prophecy, and we see them throughout scripture and maybe you've even experienced them in your own life, in your own background, which is awesome. They aren't the only parts of prophecy. Prophecy is way broader than that. At its most basic definition, to prophesy is just the ability to hear from God and share that message. That's it. And so I know you can do that because you're the son or daughter of a good father who loves to speak to you. And you're a sheep who knows their good shepherd's voice. So you can absolutely do this. Now, 1 Corinthians also tells us that to every gift given, a different level of grace is given. And so that means that prophesying will come a bit more natural to some people than others, which is okay. All that really means is that we just need to practice it. And so today, that is exactly what we're gonna do. We're gonna practice prophecy because we know scripture tells us that prophecy is one of the gifts we should earnestly seek above all else. And that's because it's the gift of sharing God's heart. That's what prophecy is. We catch the heart of God, we catch one of his many good thoughts about us or about a person or situation or family or whatever, and we share that with someone. And so it's a gift that's meant to encourage and exhort and love people well. And so it's something that we all can do and we can all grow in. So that's what we're gonna do today, but we're gonna start really easy. And so today, we're just gonna prophesy over ourselves. Yes, super easy, super low risk. This isn't scary at all, I promise. Are you ready? Great. So whenever I prophesy, whether it's over myself or a group or person or, or whatever, I just take a moment, take a beat, and just still myself before the Lord. So go ahead, close your eyes. And we're just going to pray, Lord, silence everything that isn't your voice right now in the name and blood of Jesus. So just let him silence Take a few breaths. And then we're just going to ask him, what do you have to say for me, God? Who do you say I am? What do you want to tell me about my life today? And then we just let him speak. And he might have given you a word or um, said something really specific. He might have shown you a picture or a Bible verse, or uh, maybe it was just a feeling or a, a, just a sense that he was giving something or saying something or, or whatever it might be. But 
whatever it is, it's going to be kind and loving and encouraging because that's who the Lord is. So if you just heard or felt something that was not kind or loving or encouraging, that wasn't Jesus, okay? You can throw that out. That's not what we want. Absolutely not. Throw it away and try again because he will always be kind and loving and encouraging. And if it's one of those things, it's probably him. So you get to receive that. Whatever he said about you, you get to receive it and own it. Now, the thing when we prophesy over ourselves is that often we are like, oh, well, that, okay, that wasn't God. That was just me. That's like who I want to be. Or that's me just like trying to make myself feel better or whatever. But we're just going to nip that in the bud right now, okay? Like, no, that's nonsense. You are a big deal, right? Like, the creator of the universe has decided to live and dwell inside of you. You're epic, okay? So whatever he said to you that was good and kind and loving and encouraging, guess what? That's who you are. You get to own it, all right? No one is helped by you playing small. The only one helped by that is Satan. And like, we're not on team Satan. We're on team Jesus, which by the way, our team wins. It's great. It's some good news. So you get to basically hear God for yourself and exhort and encourage yourself. So you can do this at any time of day, at, at any point, whenever you need to feel God's presence, whenever you need to know what he says about you, you can do this exercise. You just still yourself and ask him, who am I? What do you have for me today? And then receive it. And that's the first step of prophecy. Now, remember when we prophesy, and this is really key, it always comes from that foundation of God's goodness and his love. So if it does not make you feel loved and encouraged, it's not him. Ignore it, right? Now, do this this week a few times. Share it with your friends and family, what God is saying to you. And next week, I'm going to come back and we're going to build on this and we're going to start talking and prophesying over other people, which is really fun. So enjoy what the Lord is saying to you, Coastline, and I will see you next week.